Hi, thanks for tuning in. We're going to do a quick walkthrough of the Arduino code for the Talking Breathalyzer. And you would want to go here if you wanted to customize the uh, Talking Breathalyzer while it's running in portable mode um, on battery power. So to do that, first thing we need to do is open the code. So let's go to um, find the program files group and look for the Breathalyzer group under program files and find switch to portable mode. And so as you can see, we're just using the standard Arduino um, software to make this change. And if you've done any Arduino programming in the past, um, it, you'll find this quite easy. If you haven't programmed the Arduino, but you know a little bit of programming, it's also pretty easy. You should be able to figure it out. But let's just walk through this code. So all the variables and text that shows up on the LCD screen is all in this first section here. So we'll just walk through these um, one at a time. So for example here, when the breathalyzer first boots up, it says on the LCD screen, the talking breathalyzer, for novelty purposes only. So if you wanted to, to personalize that, then you could just go here and just say, for example, John's breathalyzer and save it, re-upload it here, and you would be done. So that, that's pretty easy to change. The breathalyzer has four modes. Uh, one, four, so, sorry, four characters. One character is an old English voice, another one's a pirate voice, spooky voice, and New York cab driver voice. And so if you were to change the MP3 files, which are down here, and do your own character, then you'd probably want to go here and, and rename one of the characters, which you could do by just changing that text. On the MP3 files, the reason why you see four MP3s is because there's one particular MP3 for each character. So the ones that end in zero are for the first character, Old English. The ones that end in one are for the second character, Pirate. Three is the, sorry, two is the third character, spooky voice, kind of a Halloween, spooky, scary guy. And the fourth character ends in three, that's the New York cab driver. He's a really mean guy, basically insults everyone, so he's not that nice. Um, all these sound files, by the way, were done by a professional voice actor. It's inter interesting enough, the same guy did all the characters, so a really talented voice actor, we had to do these. But anyhow, these are the um, files that it plays. So for example, if the user is drunk, then it's going to play one of these files depending on which character you have selected. So if you want to change it with your own MP3 file, the easiest way would be to pick a character you want to customize. So let's say you want to customize, um, let's say you don't like the pirate character and you want to change that for your own character. So change this here. And then the pirate character is number one. So you would just go down, for example, to drunk one and the easiest way to go would be simply to just overwrite this file with your own file, right? That way you don't have to keep track of the names. Just keep stay with the same naming convention. Um, do a new MP3 file, call it drunk1.mp3, overwrite the existing file, you're done. That's the easiest way to go. Of course, you can change this name to whatever you want, but then you got to track everything and you may make a mistake down the road. So that's the easiest way to go. This is some more text. So for example, if the user was buzzed, it will say on the screen, buzzed. You can change that again to whatever you want. Just be careful that the LCD screen only has so many characters, so you can't make this too long or you're gonna run out of um, a room. Although you can scroll the LCD screen. So for example, this one here, which happens to be the response that gets played if the user is drunk, and we're in the New York cab driver mode. Remember I told you he was mean. So this text actually is too long for the screen, but in the code, we wrote a little routine where it will scroll the text. So you can actually handle text longer than the screen and do a scrolling text if you want. So that is that. Uh, let's keep going. Um, side note, you'll notice this progmem thing. So you may be wondering what that is. That's not really common Arduino code. And the reason why we did that is because it turns out that the Arduino has actually three kinds of memory. And there's a good article on the Arduino website right here that talks about it. Flash memory, SRAM, and EEPROM. And so the SRAM memory 
is basically where all your variables are stored. And as you can see, you only get 1K, which isn't very much. So the problem is that uh, in our particular code, we have, because we have this name that tune, name that tune game, we have all these variables. And it, it basically took up all the 1K of memory and the thing just flat out didn't work. So what we had to do was use this progmem routine. And what that does is instead of having the variables go in this memory, the variables go in your flash memory. In your flash memory, you have a lot more space. In this example, it's the at mega 168, which has 16K. In our case, we're actually using the at mega 328, which has 32K. So we actually get a lot more space. And so that's a little trick to get us more uh, memory and variables. So just in case you're wondering, that's what that's for. But I think it's also kind of nice for you because all the text for the breathalyzer is here and you can just pick what you want and just change it all in one spot. So it, it does make it a little easier, I guess, to customize. So anyhow, let's keep going. So um, show themes, what this is, is the breathalyzer has the normal breathalyzer, um, which you see in the demo. And then it also has, also in the demo, there's, there's some extra buttons that we supply. There's actually three extra buttons and you can program those buttons to do whatever you want. In the sample code, we've done a name that tune game for the first button, a name that movie game for the second button, and just a beer drinking song for the third button. And so again, you can keep that and supply your own MP3s. These MP3s are not supplied due to um, copyright reasons. So in this part of the code, you would want to change this to your MP3s. That's what this is. And I'll, I'll talk about the code and how, how that works in a little bit. So let me skip over these for now. This is the name that movie MP3s. Um, so that's the name of the MP3 file that plays. And then there's a delay, the sound plays, and then this shows up on the screen telling the user what movie it was. And there's a, a random number generator that randomly picks which one to play. So you're not playing them in the same order all the time. Okay, so let's keep going. We've already talked about the progmem thing. That's all these string declarations, so we can skip that. Um, these are some variables you can customize. So the blow time, the default is five seconds. Uh, it's actually in milliseconds, so 5,000 equals five seconds. Time, how long to display the results, also five seconds. Those you probably want to leave alone, but if you wanted to change them, you could. Um, this is how long to heat up the alcohol sensor. So that one is important because the uh, alcohol sensor is going to suck up some battery life. And uh, of course, we want to conserve our battery. So while we're not taking an alcohol reading, we want to power the sensor off. So we're not using battery. We only want to power the alcohol sensor when we're taking a reading. The downside is before we can take the reading, the alcohol sensor has to stabilize and get to a point where it's hot enough to be able to good, get a good reading. The default time for that is, is 30 seconds, and there's also a min and a max. So the minimum time it can heat up is 10 seconds, the max time is 60. And depending on which one you go depends on how hot the sensor already is. That's what the code does, which we can show uh, in a little bit. So if the, if the alcohol sensor is already warmed up, then we're go only going to take another 10 seconds before we take the reading. If it's not warmed up, it's cold, you just turned it on for the first time, you used it last night, then it's going to take probably 60 seconds to heat up. That's what that stands for. So again, that you could change if you want to, but you probably want to leave that one alone. Uh, let's keep going. These are the pin declarations. So which pins we're using that you, if you follow the schematic, then obviously you don't want to change those. If you wire things to your own pins, um, which, you know, again, you probably don't want to do because the music shield uh, takes up certain pins which you can't change. So there's only certain pins on the Arduino that are open. So you want I'd recommend you stick with the default ones here. That uh, is that. Okay, let's keep going. This is the initialization code, uh, init code for the uh, music shield. You wouldn't want to change that. This you may want to change, that's the volume. So the volume is set um, with this variable 10. The, um, the way it works on the volume is actually the lower number is higher. I should add a comment for that in the code. But so if you put five, it's gonna be louder. If you put 20, it's gonna be quieter. So it's actually backwards. But um, if you didn't like the volume, you could change that. I think the default of 10 is, is pretty good. 
So let's keep going here. Now we're in our main loop. This, so this is the main program. So the first thing that we do is we check which character do we want to go in. And so for this, we're just simply reading the uh, potentiometer. So that's an analog reading. And we're either going to get um, one of four characters. So depending on the value of that potentiometer, that's the knob uh, on top of the uh, breathalyzer. We are then going to go into uh, either the first character, which again was the old English guy. This is the pirate. Spooky, he's kind of a spooky Halloween type character for Halloween parties. That's, that was the idea. And then the third guy is in your, in your cab driver. He's really mean, insults, insults you. Uh, not, not a nice guy, basically. So that's the first thing we do to determine which character we're in. And once we've got that, this toggle switch, that is the um, toggle switch on the breathalyzer. And that uh, determines whether or not we go into raw data mode. So if you flip the switch and we go into raw data mode, then it's going to um, heat up the alcohol sensor. So again, this is kind of backwards, but that's just how it works. So the heat pin, that's the, the pin that, just, that tells the alcohol sensor to heat up. If it's low, it means turn it on, supply power to it. If it's high, it means turn it off and um, power it down. And again, we already talked about why we want to conserve power for the alcohol sensor. So that is that. Then moving on, we need, next need to check, did the user hit the breathalyzer button? And in which case we would actually take a reading. So if yes, then that's gonna go to one. Then again, we wanna heat up the alcohol sensor. And depending on which character we're in, we're gonna tell the user to wait because the uh, alcohol sensor needs to heat up. So that is that. Um, so we're just gonna display warming up. And then while it's warming up, here is where we're figuring out how long do we need to wait, how much longer do we need to wait. So in other words, how warmed up was the alcohol sensor already? So again, if it was already warmed up, we, we may only wait another 10 seconds, which would be this one. If it wasn't warmed up, then we would wait uh, 60 seconds. So this tells the user how long we need to wait. Then it's actually going to wait that time. So then this is a, just a while loop. So let's say it was, it was going to be another 30 seconds, so then we'll just wait here 30 seconds. And then at the, we'll be telling the user how long, so visually they'll know how long they need to wait. Okay, so moving along. So now we've waited the 30 seconds, and we need to get a baseline reading. So we need to know what the value of the alcohol sensor was before the user blew. blew. That's our baseline. So that's this code right here. Then we tell the user, okay, blow for five seconds. Here we go. Again, which character? It's going to tell them to blow uh, in that specific voice of that character. Okay, so user does that. And then you'll notice we have this high value variable. And so what that means is sometimes in the real world, the users aren't going to blow the whole time. If that happens, not an issue because what we do is we take the, the highest value. So let's say the user only blew for two seconds. Um, we're going to take the highest alcohol reading during those two seconds, and that's what we use to display our results. So if your users don't blow the whole time, don't worry about it. Okay, so now, uh, again, at the end of the five seconds, we're going to take the highest value, which is here, and we're going to compare that.